quality 12. What do you mean when you say divine truth is demonstrated by actions, supported by evidence, scientific, emotional, physical and spiritual? Mm. Well, there's a lot involved in this, uh, in this quality that we've tried to outline and perhaps we could have separated it all, but, but <laughs> we'd still be discussing it in a year's time yes, if we did that. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, you... let's look at each aspect of that, shall we, okay. in terms of uh, w what the, this quality means. Mm -hmm. So what was the first aspect? It's divine truth is demonstrated by actions. Okay, so divine truth is such, a, is, is such that it's not just a theory. It's always something that happens in practice. Yeah. So, for example, divine truth isn't a theory that someone created. It's an actual law that exists in practice. It's actually, it controls actions. So, for example, God's truth about gravity is not a theory. It's an actual law. And it, cre has a creation, it creates and affects our actions. It mm -hmm. de defines how everything works. Yeah. God's law of aerodynamics, another physical law or a physical truth that defined by action. We've got to create a wing yeah. um, that has cer certain aerodynamic properties before we can engage the law. Yes. So th it requires actions. Mm -hmm. So it's all, always, it's not just theories, never, mm -hmm. never just theories. They always have practical aspects. So it's almost like saying all of God's truths have this beautiful quality to them and that is that every one of them is not just theoretical and not just a concept or an idea, yeah. but is an actual thing that comes into operation when we engage it. And every one of God's laws is like that. Even the moral laws and the, and the soul-based laws are all the same. They all have this particular unique aspect to them. A lot of people's ideas on the planet are not like that. They're just philosophizing about things. And, and the, whole, the whole process of philosophy, for example, is really not engaging many of God's laws because it, it, you don't have to act in any way. Mm -hmm. You can just theorize and philosophize. And anything that you can just theorize and philosophize about that doesn't result in some kind of action in the end should probably be given up in preference to um, finding something that has a practical application. Mm -hmm. All of God's laws have practical applications. And from what you're saying, it can be demonstrated by actions. Always. So if we have a truth, then we should be able to observe it in action. Exactly. So let's yeah. look at uh, the issue of curing breast cancer in the left breast mm -hmm. for women. If we discovered the reason, the cause of cancer occurring in the left breast, every single person who engaged the law in a positive direction would cure their cancer. Yeah. Every single person. So any person who, but, but no one who had cancer in the right breast would mm -hmm. be affected by it because it would be a different law, yeah. a different, different reason, a yep. different thing going on than the persons who had cancer in the left breast. Mm -hmm. and, and if we, we can document it through processes, we could easily document it if we, cho if we knew what the underlying cause of the cancer was. Right, and, and it won't be physical because this part of this truth says it's going to be emotional. Mm -hmm. So this is another part or another aspect of it, which we'll discuss in a minute. Yeah. So, but what was the second one that I raised there after action? It's demonstrated by action, supported by evidence, scientific, emotional, physical and spiritual. Yes. So let's look at this whole aspect of supported by evidence. Mm -hmm. Firstly, as a foundation, all of God's truths are the absolute truths of the universe. They are all supported by evidence, every single one of them. So every single one of God's laws, whether they be physical, moral, mm -hmm. or spiritual in nature, are all going to be supported by some evidence. Yes. And in fact, the more we understand that, the more we can discover the actual laws. We can look at the evidence. We can look at it from a scientific perspective and say this evidence could mean that or that or that or that or that. Let's go through the process of working out what it means 100% of the time. Yeah. Once we've done that, we've now seen the relationship between the cause and the effect. Yeah. And this is a beautiful thing about all of God's laws. They all do that. So 
So all of God's truths are supported by evidence. They're, in other words, you cannot come up with the truth of God that's not supported by evidence. And this is a very important factor mm -hmm. that we need to consider. If there is a so-called truth that people religiously, for example, are trying to believe, but there is no evidence to support that that particular thing is true, no matter how much we've tried to discover it from a, either from a physical, emotional or spiritual perspective, yeah. then it means it's probably not true. Yeah. No matter whether it's contained in a holy book or not, it's probably not true. Mm -hmm. Because it's only the things that are, that are supported by evidence that will, in the end, be God's, determined to be God's truth. truth. Yeah. Now, the evidence can be scientific in nature. I would argue that all of God's truths uh, uh, and all of the evidence are all scientific. Yeah. But we could break it down into scientific. <clears throat> in other words, we can come up with support, evidence for it scientifically. It will be emotional in nature. In other words, there will have to be some kind of emotional engagement with love because, remember, everything is revolving around love. So there's got to be some aspect of love involved with the evidence that's supportive yeah. and some aspect out of harmony with love that, that results in providing the opposite to the evidence, if you like. Yes, you know, so there's evidence... Supporting, supporting the positive consequence. We see the contrary when we. And there's evidence supporting yeah. the negative consequence. Yeah. And so, therefore, we can discover the operation of the truth, the law itself. Yeah. And so, if we understood that, we would see that it's emotional. We would also see what were the other things that I mentioned there? Uh, <clears throat> physical and spiritual evidence. Yes, yeah, so there's physical evidence, things that we see with our own eyes, can hear with our own ears, develop with our senses, in other words, and understand with our senses. So we can see it all occurring. Yeah. So there's this this aspect of love, emotion, um, physical and spiritual uh, evidence that is all accrued. Exactly. As we examine truth. And the evidence will not disappear when we pass. Yep. And this is what I mean by spiritual. It has to not only be supported in the physical body. Mm -hmm. but it would also be supported by any people who were in the spirit bodies. They would also see the same evidence. Sure. In other sure. words, the evidence is not going to be different depending on the location. Yep. You'll be able to still examine the evidence from any location, mm -hmm. whether your location is in the physical world or in the spirit world. And this is something we need to understand, that the, while there might not be as much physical evidence there might be a mountain of spiritual evidence yeah. that a spirit can see that a person on earth cannot see. Yeah. And so we need to combine all of these things to determine what the truth is. God's truth always have the combination of being truth no matter where we are. Yeah. So in that you're saying that sometimes we might not be able to see all of the evidence because of something relating to our emotional, physical or spiritual state. Would well, not only that, true? we might not be able to see the evidence even from our eyesight because the evidence may not be available to our eyesight. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many physical truths that are available in the physical universe that are not available to our eyesight. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop thinking I have to personally see with my own eyes because there has to be other ways of measuring what is true, what is not. Yep. Like you can't see the wind, but you can feel it on your face. So, yeah. so there's a physical evidence, but it's feeling based and not seeing based. Mm -hmm. You might see the effects, right? But if there's nothing that moves around you, you won't see the effects except feeling it. Yeah. And this is the thing that we need to understand. It's not just uh, wise for us to see physical things, to look at, use our sight or our hearing, but rather we need to understand that there are all our senses that need to be involved in the examination of the evidence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, just to touch on a couple of things you've written here as mm -hmm. well in notes. Um, so God's truth about the universe is demonstrated by what happens in the universe. And you've really touched upon that already, haven't you? Mm -hmm. You've basically said that we, what we observe happening is demonstrating truth to us. Exactly. And if we correctly make uh, the right analysis of that particular happening or event, 
then we will be able to replicate it over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for example, if I find out the real cause of a person who has cancer in their left breast, I'll be able to replicate over and over and over again both the creation of the cancer and its cure. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, God's truth about the condition of someone's soul is demonstrated by their actions and what they attract to their soul. Yes, and this is another thing we need to understand is that just because a person says they feel something, it doesn't mean anything, really. Mm -hmm. It's how they act that shows how they really feel. Right? So again, truth is demonstrated by action. How God acts shows how God really feels, yeah. and how humans act show how humans really feel. Yeah. So, for example, here on earth, we say we love, but, and we say we understand love, but if we look at the actual evidence, there's millions of people who die before, before, before they're five years old. Mm. Now, you know, is that a loving thing? No. What are our actions showing? Our actions are showing we don't understand love. Yeah. That's what our actions are showing. Collectively, we don't understand love. And so we need to accept that. We need to go, okay, the actions, the result, the result lots of people, children dying, is the cause of our not understanding love in some way. Mm -hmm. And we need to fix that. Mm -hmm. We need to change that if we're going to have a different effect. So it's caused by us not understanding love. It's caused yeah. by us not understanding love. Yeah. And not just the persons who are dying. It's caused by the, uh, all people on the planet not understanding love because all of us are responsible for the fact that these children are dying when there's enough food on the planet to support their life. Yeah. So if these children are dying from malnutrition or from some kind of disease, it's because of the lack of love in the people who have enough power and enough money and enough wealth to change it. Mm -hmm. And that is applying mostly to the Western world. Yeah. So the reality is people die, children dying on the planet from disease and from malnutrition, you could say the primary cause of this is the lack of love in people who have enough. Mm. That's the primary cause. Mm. And we need to examine, all of us who are in the Western world need to go, okay, how am I contributing to that particular outcome? Absolutely. What am I choosing to do to contribute to that outcome? And I know just personally on that front, uh, when we met, I was full of rage at the people, at all of us who have enough for not Doing ending anything. this problem. Exactly. And in that way, I was also contributing, contributing. to that problem. Exactly. Because rage wasn't... is an act out of harmony with love. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't really loving those, my brothers and sisters here in the West and... That and also was... loving, also loving the others because exactly. the reality is you can't love while you're angry. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's a it's a it's a really pertinent issue to every one of us here in the West, isn't it? It is. Yeah. These are huge issues that we need to be aware of. The fact is that a lot of our choices are resulting in what we currently see on the planet, yeah. and we can't go with that's happening over there. No. The fact that we do do that yeah. is an indication of how unloving we are. <laughs> yes. Yes. If we have the awareness of it we're all, and we're denying it... We'd want to well, do what we can to change them. Yes. And we'd want to start with ourselves. Yes. We'd want to start with how we act, or how, what we eat, what we drink, how we consume. Everything would need to change mm -hmm. if we're truly sincere about addressing the issue. Yeah. And, and also we would take steps or actions to try to help overseas where other issues are occurring that yes. we've assisted in creating. Because we're seeing evidence, physical evidence and emotional evidence really, yes. that something out of harmony with love is occurring. Yes. yes, and we need to understand that because it's soul-based, a lot of these issues are soul-based, that if we change our soul first, that's the soul we have control over. Yeah. If we change our soul first, a lot of these other things would start to disappear and if collectively everyone in the West changed their soul attitude towards children dying in other countries, then there would be no children dying in other countries mm -hmm. or very few in comparison to what are dying now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, coming to know divine truth will always result in changes to our emotions, intentions and desires. Yes. And you have an example here. Well, let's look at firstly yeah. the statement and then yeah. we can raise the example. 
what we need to understand from this particular truth is the divine truth always has an emotional component because love is an emotion mm -hmm. and because truth is always associated with love it therefore follows that truth has to be always associated with an emotion so from a logical perspective that can only be the case so there must and I must start to understand that there is this emotional component with regard to the understanding and living of truth. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I can just intellectually choose to do. Something has to change inside of me that causes me to do. I see. Something has to move so that I feel a desire to love, mm -hmm. which is an emotion. Mm -hmm. and, I, and so therefore I must become more sensitive emotionally. And in fact, there are certain truths of the universe, particularly soul-based truths, that you cannot understand unless you become more, emotional, more emotionally connected. Now, there's a whole uh, concept on the earth today of emotional, in, in, like, what do they call it? Emotional intellect or intelligence. emotional intelligence. Yep. And, and I agree with that. We need to gain emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. it's, and divine truth always has this aspect of emotional intelligence as well as physical intelligence. Yeah. Always. Right. And we need to stop separating emotion from physical. Mm -hmm. We need to see it as supporting evidence that something can be truthful. Yeah. Right. So I, the example... It was a woman being abused by her husband would realise that he must not love her if he beats her. Exactly. So this is an example of somebody, normally somebody who's beaten by her husband, in the case of a beaten wife... She would reason with herself, oh, but he still loves me, he just drinks too much and he hurts me then or whatever is his under, underlying defence for his actions. Mm -hmm. And she's not seeing that she's staying with him because she wants to feel safe financially or she's staying with him because she has an emotion towards herself that mirrors her husband's emotion towards her. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they're in a codependent addiction. She's not seeing these particular things. She's not being honest with herself. But if she was being emotionally intelligent, emotionally truthful, she'd realise that anybody who hits her cannot love her. Yeah. Anybody who hits her cannot love her. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, many of us have grown up getting hit as children and then our parents have told us that it's love. Yeah. But, but this is saying anybody who hits you does not love you. Mm. That is the emotion that we'd have to get to eventually. And does this relate to this truth in that you're saying divine truth is demonstrated by actions? Exactly. And so then if we examine the actions of people, we can come to understand more truth? Exactly. So if she say, looks at his actions and says, if he's hitting me, he obviously doesn't love me. There's a subsequent result. He can say he loves her. Mm -hmm. He can cry when she leaves. He can get all emotional and, you know, whatever. None of it means anything with regard to God's definition of love. None of it. Mm. because the reality is if he loved her, he wouldn't do it. Mm. He wouldn't hit her. Right? And, and if she came face to face with that truth, she would leave. She wouldn't stay. Mm -hmm. Or she would go, wow, if I want to stay, it means that I don't love me either. Mm. Therefore, she would see that she has an issue of love herself towards herself that she needs to address. And this is what you mean by the changes to our emotions, intentions and desires. Exactly. We would need to see at some point that the, it's the emotion in her that's driving her to stay in the situation. Mm -hmm. And if she discovered the truth of that emotion, she would leave. Yeah. Because she would also discover the truth that he doesn't love her by feeling the truth of her emotional reasons why she's staying. Mm -hmm. When she says, oh, I'm staying because I think he loves me, she's not being truthful to herself or to him. And she's, she's ignoring the evidence that she already has. In total ignorance of the evidence. Yeah. The evidence is clear. Yeah. She is not being loved. The evidence is clear. She needs to act upon the evidence. Yeah. If yeah. she truly honoured divine truth, if she truly honoured God's truth, she would act upon the evidence. Mm. She wouldn't keep justifying staying. <clears throat> For any reason, children, any reason, potential that he might harm her more, she wouldn't even stay for that reason. Mm. Mm. Okay, divine truth affects our thoughts and feelings, not just our actions. Yes, so, so 
you can't just change your actions and expect yourself to be in more harmony with divine truth. You are in more harmony, but it's not completed yet. To complete being in harmony with divine truth, the way God has created these soul-based laws, it means that you must bring your thoughts and even and your emotions into harmony with the truth, not just your actions. So, for example, you might have a feeling inside of you to suicide, but never act upon it. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is you need to bring your feeling into harmony. In other words, no longer feel that you want to commit suicide. Yeah. Right? And the way you do that is by releasing from you the emotional reasons why you desire suicide sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. requires you taking particular actions that are not only actions but involving your emotions, that you need to release emotions that cause actions. And you need to understand the relationship between emotions and actions. Yeah. God's universe, one of, one of the qualities of God's truth is there is a direct link between love, which is an emotion, and truth, which is an action, a law. Right? There's direct links between these particular things. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand these links. If we truly understand this at the soul level, we will start applying it to our personal life. And we will go, okay, it's not sufficient for me just to change my action. I need to change the reason why I want to act out of harmony with the law, out of harmony with the truth, out of harmony with love. Mm. Once I change the reason why I want to act out of harmony, it, everything after that will be easier because it will be automatic for me to live in harmony mm -hmm. with the love and the truth that I've discovered. Mm. So this is a beautiful quality of God's truth that we need to understand there's physical evidence and it's supported by our emotional analysis as well as our intellectual analysis. And if, if one is supporting one but not the other, then there's a problem with it, right? If it's a quality, if it's, if it's a divine truth, there will be no separation between the intellectual analysis of a problem and the emotional analysis of the problem. The two will be combined. Yeah. There will be no separation. And, and in fact, by combining the emotional analysis of the issue and the intellectual analysis of the issue, there is a high likelihood that we will come up with whether the thing being analysed is God's truth or not by, by analysing it. So, so, for example, perhaps an example is my own death. Uh -huh. There's this religious viewpoint in, from the first century that got carried into religion that I died for the sins of others. Now, if we looked at it purely, purely intellectually, there are certain illogical things about that, the, things that are, can't be supported by logic. For example, why should I die for the sins of others? Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't seem very logical. It seems, or loving. Or, but no, no. Oh, see, sorry. see, now one's emotional and one's intellectual. Let's look at the logical first. Is there any evidence to support that people's sins have disappeared when I died? No. Is there any evidence to support that any person who believes in my blood saving actually gets saved? No. Is there evidence, any evidence to support that any person who believes in my body and my blood saving them actually, actually has any kind of physical change? In other words, they don't get old. They don't get sick anymore. They don't just by having that one, that one realisation. No. No logical evidence. Let's look at it emotionally for a moment. If we look at it emotionally, how unfair is it that one person pays for the sins of the entire of the human race? That's pretty unfair. <laughs> yep. And the average person being in that position would feel it's pretty unfair. They would feel it's not very loving. If you were the parent, would you be loving, demanding of a child who is good, the punishment to compensate for the child that is bad. Mm -hmm. No, you wouldn't. From an emotional perspective, it would, you would rebel against it. Yeah. So it's not logical from an intellectual perspective, but it's also not logical from an emotional perspective. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be the truth. Yeah. It just cannot be. It doesn't matter whether people wrote it down, whether it's now in the holy book of the Bible, it cannot be the truth because it's not logical intellectually and it's also not logic, logical emotionally. Mm -hmm. right? And for it to be divine truth, it has to be logic intellectually and emotionally. Mm -hmm.
for it to be God's truth. Mm. And once I understood this quality, I'd go, okay, I can dismiss, I can just look at the different teachings of religious formats and I can throw out that one, throw out that one, throw out that one, throw out that one. I can throw out lots of belief systems yeah. quite simply by just making that one simple comparison. This one quality of divine truth can sort out most of your religious life <laughs> in terms of what is worthy of your consideration in terms of practice and what is not worthy of it. Yeah, yeah. All right, you had another couple of examples listed here. Yep. Um, one was anyone looking at a woman to have sex with her has already committed adultery in his heart. Mm -hmm. Which is a quote from the Bible or something I actually did say. Yeah. <laughs> And a person wanting to give up smoking but continues... Well, let's look at the first one okay. instead of reading a separate... So let's look at the first one, the, the, the issue with regard to having sex, wanting to have sex with someone but not actually doing it. Mm -hmm. The reality is there's a feeling coming out of you that you want to do it. That feeling is out of harmony with love, if you're, particularly if you're in a part, you, know, you have a partner already. That is definitely out of harmony with love. Yeah. So, so, if, if it's so if it's so out of harmony with love, then look at the reason why emotionally you desire it. Mm. Stop ignoring it. Stop trying to dismiss it. Stop trying to make it go away by controlling yourself. Stop trying to do all the things you normally would do and be truthful with yourself and go, okay, the fact that I have this feeling means there's a problem. Mm. What's the problem? What's the reason why I feel attracted? And so in listing this here, you're basically saying that there might be physical evidence to say that someone is faithful, but if there's emotional evidence to say that they are not, exactly. i.e. I wanting to but not doing it, yeah. then we can Or flirtatious, say, being flirtatious all the time but not actually going ahead and actually having sex with the person. Mm -hmm. So you're saying we can say then that that person's not in harmony with truth on that issue. They because, don't understand God's truth on the issue. Because there's there's not a synchrony between emotional, physical Yeah, there's truth. no synchronicity between their, their the thing they think they think yeah. and the way they actually feel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's no there's no synchronicity, there's no symbiosis between those two states. If you were truly in harmony with God's laws on this subject, you would come to understand that the that it's almost as hurtful for your partner to know that you're attracted to somebody as it is for you to actually act on that attraction. Yeah. Yeah. And once you understood that, you would understand the necessity of looking at the underlying emotional reason why you feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. And let's look at the second example. Sure. <clears throat> A person saying they want to give up smoking but continuing to smoke has no intention of giving up. Exactly. So this is a, another statement about action. The fact is, if a person chooses to not act, then it means they don't really have a completed desire or intention to act. Because the reality is we always act upon the things we really want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if a person says over and over again, I'm going to give up smoking, I'm going to, get, going to give up smoking, but they never give up smoking, then they're not being honest with themselves if they think they want to. Mm -hmm. They need to look honestly at the situation. Now, with, one of God, with regard to this quality of God's truth, God's truth is asking us to examine our motives, our intentions, our emotions, our feelings, as mm -hmm. well as look at the situation logically. Mm -hmm. So the smoker who's looking at this situation logically from an evidence point of view, he would be going, okay, I know logically from an evidence point of view, physically smoking harms me. Obviously, I don't care <laughs> <laughs> that it harms me. Or I don't care enough. Or I don't care enough yeah. that it harms me. If I don't care enough that it harms me, that means that I'm willing to pay somebody to actually slowly murder me or pay somebody to slowly kill me by taking their cigarettes. This is an indication perhaps that my lack of, of my lack of love of self has not yet been developed. Mm. Yeah. So from an emotional perspective and from a physical evidence perspective, you could see that there's got to be an issue out of harmony with love, mm. out of harmony with God's truth on the matter. And once I caught a disease from the, from the, from the uh, practice, I would be definitely looking and going, 
wow, the fact that I've got now a disease which is extreme pain and suffering mm. as a result of my actions is an indication of how out of harmony I must be yeah. on the subject. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. So in summary of this particular quality, we need to see that God's truth always has evidence for its existence. Mm -hmm. And the evidence is emotional as well as intellectual. It's physical as well as emotional and spiritual in its nature. And we can't pull it out of one area only. It, there will be all of these areas that are involved. And, uh, yeah, I'm just interested in the way that you've actually explained this. It, um, when I read that truth, I immediately start to think about it in terms of external truths. Um, divine truth demonstrated by actions, so how the universe operates is the workings of God's truth mm -hmm. um, in action and supported by evidence, scientific, emotional, spiritual and physical. Mm -hmm. um, and all that's so, true. Well, what you just said is true. Yes, but also this is lovely the way you've very much personalised that in saying that, I, from what I understand from what you're saying, is that when we have a divine truth inside of us, there will be evidence that is physical, spiritual. It will be reflected in our actions, our emotions. All of these things will show us. And so exactly. to, to me that's really interesting the way you've chosen to explain that because it's easy when encountering this truth, I think, to think of it in terms of external truths. Mm -hmm. But it's just as relevant in terms of what's going on inside of us and our own development. Extremely so, because if you look at it, it's the things that are inside of ourselves that we feel that are out of harmony with love that are going to prevent us from examining the truth of the universe. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to feel the truth of the universe while there's something out of harmony with love inside of ourselves. So the two can't be divorced from each other. Universal truth and personal truth can't be separated. Yeah. And yet there is a huge desire for the majority of people to attempt the separation. Mm -hmm. But it's impossible to separate them, in fact, because one, our own lack of desire for personal truth, is going to cause us to not know the other, our lack of knowledge about universal truth. Mm -hmm. our, how we see everything inside of us will also prevent us from seeing everything the way God sees everything. Remember, universal truth, God's truth, absolute truth, is about how God sees everything. Yeah. So, so while I'm out of harmony with how God sees everything internally, then I have no capacity to understand truth. Yeah, and I've been sitting here struggling a little bit as we've talked through this, this quality 12 because Personally, from my own experience, I know that my ability to analyse external evidence has been completely, like, I've lacked logic mm -hmm. because I haven't had intellectual logic. I've been applying logic through my emotional injuries. Yes. And I often, I often struggle in this area. In Which, by the way, many women do. Yes. Many men do the opposite. They apply logic through their intellectual injuries, with, if you like. Yes, yeah, without any... <laughs> without any emotion. Emotion, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so when we get into this area, I feel really bogged down because I think, yeah, but hang on, Mo because I'm having this yeah, typically internal. feminine uh, yeah. way of understanding truth, I think, yeah, but that doesn't hold up because if you're holding on to this emotion, you don't even see it that way. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting quality for me to just yeah. be around because I, um, my logic has literally shifted, which I know is impossible, but, you know, I haven't had logic in certain areas. And, it's and only, now you have logic Yes, as so a I'm result of? Just feeling through some of the, the injuries inside of me that exactly. were outside of God's truth, if you so like. So God's truth was always there. Mm -hmm. You it's, just couldn't see it. Yes. You couldn't feel it. I couldn't. It's probably feeling it. Yeah. Or see know. it yeah. in many cases. Yeah. Until you went through an emotion that released something and now you go, wow, oh, that's obvious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's definitely one of God's truths, right? <laughs> and I have this real thing that I feel like I can't even analyse external truths very well mm -hmm. because I know that... I've just got to get the internals right in terms of God's love and then it will all be clear. But until yes. that point, I still struggle a lot. Yes. Um, 
I'm very much aware now and desirous of this interaction with God's law to yep. demonstrate to me where I'm out of harmony. Yep. I know my pain will show me that. Yep. But when it comes to analysing external truth, it's it's really limited because of these these things that go on. Exactly. Yeah. And it's interesting if you take that one step further because you basically then will say to yourself, okay, it's impossible for me to really fully discover all of God's truths unless I'm willing to fully discover all of my own. And that means discovering them intellectually and emotionally, not, not just intellectually yeah. as a separate portion. And that means looking at my actions rather than just my words yeah. to determine what the truth is. So the same thing applies to me now as it would apply to the analysis of God's truths universally. Mm -hmm. And this is the beauty of this particular quality of divine truth is, it, is it, again, it causes you to go into some self-reflection and also to see the relationship between your own inability to under, understand universal truth is, is directly related to your own inability to understand your own truth. Yeah. And when in, whenever you work through your own inability to understand your own truth and now have an ableness an ability to discover your own truth, now you have a greater ability to assimilate God's truth. Mm -hmm. And so it helps you understand the relationship between the personal truth and the universal truth, yeah. which, is, which is another quality of divine truth, actually, <laughs> which we'll talk about at, at, at the end of this discussion. Yeah. But, but it's very important that we understand this relationship between the universal and the personal. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's totally important. Okay. So, so I feel uh, once people understand this particular quality, they won't uh, separate so much their desire for universal truth from their desire for personal truth. Mm -hmm. What I see happening quite frequently is that people want universal truth. You start telling them universal truth and it's their personal truth that prevents them from accepting it. And so then you've got to start focusing on what's your personal truth that's out of harmony with love and God's truth. And then they are huge, huge resistance. They don't want to look through yeah. their personal truth. So, but they want to say, oh, tell me more God's truth. The reality is you cannot understand all of God's truth while you're resistive to the personal truth because they are analysed in the same way. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> and, and if you're unwilling to go through the process of analysing it logically through actions, and through emotional logic, emotional yeah. intelligence, and if you're unwilling to go through all of those processes, then of course you're not going to see what divine truth is. So you can ask for it as much as you like, but you're not going to receive it. Yeah, uh, and I often see people struggling, they're almost in fear, wanting security for you to tell them more universal truths so they can trust enough to delve into some personal truths. Yes. And it can never work. No. Um, because, because, because unless the person is willing to go through the personal truth, they'll never understand what I'm saying to them about the universal. And isn't it ludicrous how fearful we are of examining personal truth? It's almost like a no-go zone. That people well, that's seem because to of emotions, of pain, yes. which we've talked about in another quality of yes. divine truth. We wouldn't be avoiding emotions of pain if we truly understand, understood the qualities of divine truth. We would want to feel all of our own emotional pain. So we'd have a very, very different approach to the discovery of truth if we wanted to feel our pain we'd be willing to go through it and therefore we'd be open to then looking at the evidence as it really is not the evidence we just want to see yeah. yeah yeah and this is a problem i see that most people who don't have this understanding of divine truth in their soul don't look at all the evidence mm. they only look at the evidence they want to believe mm. that supports their current generally supports their current belief systems yeah okay thanks yeah.